Hello, hello. I've arrived. That it won't be, but I will do what I must. So yes. So, Arc Nights tonight, Arc Nights through the week. So yeah. Until such time as the event is clear. So yes. So today, well, I guess, yeah. I was going to say today, Arc Nights, but I already said that, and it's implied. But yes. So, the, yes. The Wednesday stream, Tuesday and Wednesday streams, we're currently expecting around 8.30 p.m. 8.30 to 9 p.m. But yes, the Thursday and Friday streams, we're expecting 9, or, yeah, 8, 9 to 9.30 p.m. And then the... Saturday stream we're expecting probably probably also 8.30 to 9 p.m. But yes, that is the start time, just to be clear. The end time will depend a lot on how I'm feeling on that particular day. And on this particular day, I am feeling a little bit tired. But yeah, I didn't get great sleep uh, over the weekend, but I did, uh, I got some better sleep this last night, but you know, one day hasn't quite made up for two days just yet. Anyway, so, let's see. Anything else to be said in particular? Not really. The plans are pretty set in stone and already laid out. Um, yeah, and again, it's just Arc Knights. Arc Knights until we have no need to continue playing it for Originium Dust. But yes. So. If we continue at the rate of two missions per stream, we should be up to, I think, I think this also has eight missions. So we should be up to, pardon, should be up to that at, uh, we should be up to that point at about, uh, hold on. Okay, so, er, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yes. So it should be up to that by around Thursday, which gives us Thursday, Friday, Saturday to uh, to do uh, the, yeah. <laughs> it gives us a significant buffer, anyway. But yeah, I don't, hmm. I hope that I won't feel inclined to take any days off, let me be clear. <laughs> I hope that I won't feel inclined to do that, because again, I definitely do want to make sure that I am through this event. If worst comes to worst, I can always read the dialogue off of the wiki, I suppose, but I would very much prefer not to do that, if at all possible. So, we will do what I can, and I will, once again, as many times as I need to until it sticks, commit to making sure I get a little bit more rest on each night, and a little bit more rest through the day, so that I can have a more appropriate, or yeah, have an appropriate energy level. Not as though I'm not any less vibrant than usual, I suppose, at least not significantly. But it's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to get motivated when you're sleepy. Anyway, so, video games. So, last time around, some violence erupted in the settlement nearby to where uh, Team Rainbow is staying. But yes, beyond that, we also, or rather, that violence we currently are suspecting has something to do with uh, Dr. Levi Klitschko, who is the reason for us, for Team Rainbow, being in this world in the first place, and who has also been performing some unethical experiments. Well, <laughs> yeah, unethical experiments is probably putting it lightly, honestly, but he's been doing bad things, and uh, we don't like that. But yes, he's been doing things to modify creatures, and he has recently asked for some corpses, and we think, I believe that the, uh, I currently suspect that the up unrest that has just been stirred up may have something to do with that. At the very least, some monsters of some description have been seen in the town lately which suggests that uh 
suggests that uh, his modified creatures may be on the loose. And, uh, yeah, the, the local lord's soldiers have not been, not been seen in response to this unrest, suggesting something is up with them. And we know that uh, Levi isn't just messing around, basically, for his own sake. He's being commissioned to do this by someone who wants to take out the current Lord Amir of the region and uh, usurp his throne. Yes. So I guess I guess more accurately, it would be or it would be more accurate to say that he wants to uh, to inherit the throne because that individual happens to be the the Lord Amir's son. But yes. So. At this point, Team Rainbow doesn't really know anything about anything. They're just kind of here. And they just happen to stumble across a Rhodes Island uh, safe house because they happen to know a guy who knows a guy. So, <laughs> all that said, let us get into safe house battle. Yes, given Sora's low level, she's probably not going to contribute a whole lot. And considering I don't know if I want to commit to raising her at this point, we might switch her out at some point in the near future. Other than that, I haven't seen much reason to swap anyone out on my team. Nobody's doing, like, great, but nobody's doing awful either. Oops. Locked out after the battle starts? Hmm. Stage tips for the lockout. Um, some characters cannot be deployed in this stage. Interesting. I've not seen that mechanic before. Very interesting. Okay. So, Frost and Ash, it said, right? Yes, okay. Huh. I've never seen the game sort of enforce... Yeah, enforce a character limit of any sort on you. But yes, there have certainly been times in the story where certain characters that were on your side were not on your side temporarily. But I've never heard seen it say just like, yeah, you just can't use these characters, which is interesting. That's it. So, uh, I suppose, uh, we might be able to get by without swapping out Ash and, and, uh, Frost, but I don't want to. So we're gonna put some, some characters in their place. For Ash... I suppose we'll just go with Exusia. No one makes a better leader than me. You've got a good eye. And for Frost, um, I don't know if we have anyone who's like better, but I guess Ayla fills a similar role. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It feels weird to have one of Team Rainbow 2's operators here. Um. I feel like I I feel like I want to put someone else in. I guess it doesn't matter that much. Let's go with Manticore. Okay. And see so yes. On the note of swapping characters out, I had looked or I had been questioning earlier if uh Rope was an ideal pick, considering that um but yes. There are enemies here that appear to be potentially infected creatures who would be able to be silenced by um, by Snow Sand's skill. So, is this an infected creature? Yes, it is. This is also an infected creature. This is also an infected creature. Hmm. I suppose I should read the lore on these. A twisted organism born under the combined effects of radiation mutation and originium infection. But yes. And a mutant rock spider. I guess, yeah. Origin mutant excrescence. Mutant rock spider. A rock spider infected by an origin mutant. Due to their similar appearances, rock spiders are often mistakenly believed to be a close relative of infused originium slugs. However, the latest research shows that they are two completely different species. And then mutant sand beast. A sand beast infected by an origin mutant. Sand beasts are a species of small-sized omnivores that primarily inhabit deserts and hamadas. They are nocturnal in nature and often tamed by local Sargonians to be used as hunting beasts. Yes, and we have seen them splitting. Okay, oops. No, we're on stage three. But yes, anyway, as I was saying, so given that they are... Yeah, given that they are... 
creatures, infected creatures. Snow Sant should be able to should be able to uh, silence them. Because yes, it does. Yeah, when dragging an infected creature, silence it for eight seconds. So yes. Do we want a specific? Hmm. So yeah, telescoping electric net allows us to catch multiple creatures at once. But it happens fairly infrequently. Though I suppose we do. Hmm. Part of the problem here, though, is the fact that we do have a situation where we're facing a lot of enemies at once, generally speaking. So, or rather, yeah, we're facing a lot of enemies at once and we're typically killing them pretty fast, so they don't stack up that much. I don't know. I think I want to try out Barbed Claw Hook. If nothing else, it's, it's one less thing for me to remember. Yes, um... Ah, okay. See, I was wondering if, if uh, Snow Sand had an English voice. Yes, she does. I feel like she didn't last time I checked her. It'll be all right. I just need to remember my training and work hard. <sighs> all right. So, I think we should be good to go. The situation isn't substantially different from what it was, but we now have a unit who is specially purpose-built for dealing with infected creatures. So, let us begin. I guess we... Oh, wait, hold on. I got a bit ahead of myself. Claw hook checked and ready. Take a deep breath. I can do this. So, let's not do this. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. No worries. I guess we could have played out the stage, but, you know. I want to do the, the story here before I forget, and I will forget if I give myself the chance. Sip. Guns? Mercenaries? What are you babbling about? I'm telling the truth, boss. They've got huge guns. They killed Jarman. Mercenaries with big guns? Are they Sancta? Are you telling me you blew your mission over four Sancta? Um, I don't think they're Sancta, probably. They're not Sancta, but they're mercs carrying around big guns. If you're going to lie to me, at least make it believable. He's telling the truth. What do you mean he's telling the truth? He's telling the truth. They, really, they were heavily armed, but they really weren't Sancta. Our man took one in the brain, but they didn't see an arrow or a bolt. Sarcas aren't that weak. These ones weren't part of your plan. Having to deal with a bunch of fully armed mercenaries was not in the contract, boss. We need a raise. And where are they now? They're not in the infected quarter anymore. Our men are looking for them, but we haven't seen any major movements. We should still be in the area. How's the old coot doing? Your father's people are tough, especially that little sister of yours. We bumped off some of their fighters, but we haven't been able to breach the major perimeter, the manor perimeter. Your scientist monsters are doing good work out there, but your casters suck. We lost a lot of them already, without getting much for them. Those are already the best money can buy. Until your boss is willing to send us a caster, you're in no position to complain. Get your scientists to cook up some more monsters. Or change tactics. That mansion is a fortress, and a direct attack isn't going to work. It's not like your sister is an easy target, either. What about the old coot himself? Is he still holed up in the house? I haven't seen your father yet. No sign of him at all since we showed up. <laughs> I knew it. I knew something happened to him. Keep watching the manor. Tell me as soon as you've got news. What about the change our tactics part? You're getting ahead of yourself. Call to sarcasm mercenaries' intuition. The longer you drag things out, the more chances they have to go wrong. I have a contingency plan. I just need time to put it together. Confident as I am in the results of my experiments, the look on your face tells me you don't share my assessment. Um, 
Tell me, where have things gone wrong this time? I need progress from you. Would you like to offer something a little more constructive, or is your pointless needling all you have? I gave you enough corpses. I need at least 20 monsters. Or Giniutans. What? These monsters are Giniutans. They have a name. Mutants or Giniutans. Why should I care what they're called? Give me more monsters. I gave you so many already. Did you get them all killed so quickly? I'm curious. How are your minions using the Origin Utens? Do they rely on your Originium arts? What is it exactly? Superpowers? Occult mysticism? Magic? Where does it come from? Come, satisfy my curiosity. I must speak with your casters. Just do your job, egghead. You don't need to be thinking about Originium arts right now. Once we're done here, you'll have plenty of time for your own research. I have very little confidence in your project. But speaking of time, did I not tell you? Yours is in fact limited. What are you talking about? The lifespan of these origin mutants won't exceed one week. Whatever it is you have to do, you'll have to do it quickly. What are you trying to pull? This is the price for your lack of patience. You want the origin mutants produced quickly, you want them tremendously powerful, and at the same time you want them to have no weaknesses? Do you truly believe such a thing is possible? I told you, no tricks, egghead. I'm busy. I have no time to joke with you. If you are so dissatisfied with my work, I suggest you take matters into your own hands. Use your own ingenuity to solve these genetic engineering complications that I, as a professional, can't solve in so little time. Of course, you could bring me more materials, give me more time, and make your own contributions to this vapid family drama you're putting on. Science is fair. You always have a choice. That's enough of your slippery talking. Get back to work, egghead. Don't expect any mercy out of me if you fail. The price of failure is a slow and miserable death. I'm a man of my word. Ha 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 ha! When you put it like that, what else can I say? Good luck, my friend. So much smoke and chaos. Don't even need to get close to know what's going on. Never expected a ride of this scale here. Letting our horns in is sure to cause problems. I'm back. Oh, what's the situation? Yeah, <clears throat> that definitely was not the, the ranger's voice I was using before. It's out of control. There's constant fighting around a mansion on the north side of town. Looks like mercenaries on one side. Things are even worse outside the manor. Bloodstains and collapsing houses everywhere. There's infected sand beasts scurrying through the alleyways, and there's a lot of them. If it's gotten that bad, where's the Sargon military? The Lord Amir's forces? There are some armed guards in that manor on the north side, but I didn't see any other Sargon soldiers. So, it's been like this for two days? Then I wonder if the Watchman at the safe house is okay. It doesn't look good. Let's not jump to conclusions. Eh. Huh, I can't remember that voice. Oh dear. In other news, I've found the safe house. Some people have taken up guarding it, but they're not Rhodes Island personnel. It's been occupied by the mercenaries? No, not exactly. They don't look like typical mercs. Their defensive positioning is extremely specialized. They have ambush kill zones, traps, and decoys all set up. Most importantly, they've got a lot of townsfolk in that safe house. Townsfolk? Just what kind of people do they have guarding this the safe house? They look pretty much like you. They've got guns. Guns? Black Seal mercenaries? They don't have any obvious markings on them. I can't say for sure they're black steel. Armed professionals stripped of any identifying markings with guns. Oof, my head hurts. There are a lot of forces at work in this town. We can rule out a bandit raid. And if the Lord Amir's forces are missing, it's not an act of war. The situation here is far more complicated than I thought. 
if they're willing to protect civilians in the middle of a riot, they can't exactly be evil. Maybe we should try to make contact? Let's be careful. There are a lot of possibilities here, even if we just look at them protecting the townsfolk. I just hope that the type you can reason with. What's the situation? No good. I can't make sense of it. This thing looks like a circuit board, but it's totally different from any circuit I've ever seen. If you gave me a month in the technical manual, I'm still not sure I could figure it out. Ruit, I'm going to stand guard upstairs. I've been squatting so long my back is sore. Good hustle, Lord. No good? None of us have ever seen anything like the tech inside this comms equipment. I don't think we're going to be able to get it working. You wouldn't know it from the outside. It looks like your typical transmitter. Just like with the van back there, the energy they use in this world is unique. All their technology is based on this stuff called Originium. You're still studying that communicator, huh? Originium comms equipment uses some really complicated tech. Rhodes Island always had to send engineering casters out to maintain it. I'm not surprised you can't fix it. You said before you used this device to send out a distress signal? Oh, I'm not sure if the signal actually got through. When the rioters attacked the safe house, I hit the communicator as quick as I could, but they broke in before I got to talk to anyone. Everything happened so fast I could barely speak. It could be the Rhodes Island operator who took the call couldn't even hear me. So the cavalry isn't coming. I was never waiting for the cavalry. You don't look worried at all. You could say we're pretty used to fighting without backup. Wow, I'm thinking if you'd shown up just a little later, I'd be spending the rest of my life in a wheelchair. Or maybe a coffin. All I can say is, thanks. Not necessary. You've done a lot to help the civilians yourself. Well, I wouldn't make a big deal out of that. Treating the infected is kind of Rhodes Island's business. <laughs> Even if I'm just a reserve logistics operator serving as a doorman. Reading? Does that mean there's medical supplies here? But what are these weapons for? Oh, well... Rhodes Island is mainly a pharmaceutical company, but this safe house doesn't actually offer any treatment services. Safe houses are mostly to provide combat operators with supplies, equipment, weapons, and stuff while and they're out on missions. Right. Hold on, what's this? Is this a grenade launcher? Grenade? Let me see. Oh my, is this a landmine? And you've got all kinds. I thought the people here didn't use thermal weapons. The structure of this grenade launcher is a little strange. There's no propellant charge for the grenades. Does it use compressed gas? Look, here's a model using hydraulic springs. Be careful, that box is full of originium explosives. It's dangerous. Mr. Ockben, do you have ammunition for small arms here? Small arms? You mean guns? Oh, are you asking about etched ammo? We wouldn't usually have anything that valuable in a safe house like this. Rose Island combat personnel rarely use guns. Can we use these explosives? <sighs> Just be careful. Originium explosives are very dangerous. They used to be only for combat operators. But you look like you know what you're doing. I won't stop you. Thank you very much. What about these? What are these wild looking parts for? Backup casting units. Don't break them. Casting units? Must be for that Originium Arch stuff. Originium Arch is that technique that lets them throw those fireballs. We're getting into the weeds here, I'm no caster. But Originium Arch comes in all kinds of flavors. Every caster has his own specialty. Will the engineering casters you mentioned before be one of those? Huh? Have you never seen arts before? Well, we haven't seen much. But how? You've got guns, aren't you, casters? 
A gun user can't use Originia March? Now that's rare. Oh, Mr. Octane, your leg hasn't healed yet. I don't want you walking around. I'm fine. I've got my crutches. I can watch it walk a few steps. Doctor, how are the patients doing down there? I've got most of the wounded stabilized, thanks to the medical supplies here. You don't look so hot. Are you okay? I just haven't slept at all. I'll be fine. You need rest. We'll be in big trouble if we lose our only doctor. Don't worry. I'll be careful. Speaking of Originium Arts, don't they have some kind of magic where you say a spooky incantation and there's a big flash of light and presto, you're all healed up? Um, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, then? What about, like, a healing potion that you drink it and all your wounds close right up? None of that either? That's the stuff of sci-fi novels. There are arts that can heal wounds, but they're a very difficult type of arts to master. Before you can master healing art, you first have to complete an understanding of medical science. You have to know the anatomical structures of all the different races, things like that. Also, most healing arts users can only stop bleeding or speed up wound recovery. These arts are very useful on the operating table, but in my experience, they're no substitute for real medical skill. Doctor, can you use arts? I have a little knowledge. Not very useful, though. That's boringly realistic. <sighs> To think a world with magic could be so inconvenient. Hold up, did you just say sci-fi novels? Now I'm extra curious what your words sci-fi novels talk about. Would we find a bookstore in a bigger city? Maybe some history books too? Are books expensive? I've gotten myself all worked up now. You're a weird bunch. Where are you from anyway? Columbia? Victoria? You talk like you're Victorians, but like from a couple decades ago. Well, I'm not really sure how to answer that one. Uh, Miss Cohen and her friends came from very far away, from a place where Oropathy doesn't even exist. What? Yeah, that. Country with no Oropathy? Really? No Oropathy? No infected? That means no discrimination. A place with no hatred? Where everyone's equal? Lordy Lou, what kind of paradise is that? Well... We've got bad news for you, Octan. <sighs> all right, then. Your faces say it all. Just pretend I never asked. <laughs> We're under attack. Sit rep. This is just the first wave. They have us surrounded. They were probing us with those earlier strikes. We've got more coming. Your traps? All good. Watch your explosives. Blitz, keep an eye on the left flank. Don't let them get the drop on us. Understood. Lord, conserve your ammo. No problem. Let them come. Watch for surprise attacks. Let's see what they've got. Here they come. Hold your fire and get a little closer. Nine o'clock. Lord, the enemy's up. Dead ahead. Enemy down. These big guys with the horns are tough. Go for headshots. Ash, over there. What is that? Lord, be careful. Russian profanity! Exclamation mark. Alexander! I'm okay. Don't worry about me. Hold the line! What on earth is this? Watch out for those mutants. Light cover's no good. That's a proper formation. Those four know what they're doing. Sounds like gunfire. No, those are more intense shots. That's a big, rapid-fire gun. They're surrounded. It's the same mercenaries who were attacking the manor. 
Those monsters remind me of what we saw in Lung Men. The host and the herd. But uh, they're not really the same. Mercenaries carrying big guns and mercenaries commanding mysterious monsters. The situation is changing and the balance is about to break. What do we do? Don't hesitate. Prepare for battle. Those vile beings who derive this kind of monster into battle deserve not a single bit of mercy. Roger. All right. Now we begin. I suppose if I wanted to, I could probably swap in a few... I don't know. I think I had this conversation before about potentially swapping in some some of these... these uh, the other units. The only unit I feel like I could reasonably swap in would be maybe Savage for Franca, but even then I'm not super sure about that. I don't we haven't been facing anything with super high defense, I don't think. I guess hmm, no, actually the, the great swordsmen have significantly lower or yeah, the Sarkaz enemies have significantly lower defense than they do resistance. The sand beasts and the rock spiders do have defense, but they don't have that much defense. They go down pretty fast anyway. Yeah, I think Savage is still probably a good good choice for what we are doing here. Let's so. Go. Ah, okay. So that's why. I feel like putting... Yeah. I've been putting Myrtle in the very back a lot. And I'm starting yeah, to help. think that that's a bad idea. Doctor, I see the enemies rallying. I thought that was a bad idea for a while now. But more specifically, I've been thinking it's a bad idea because... Uh, if we have things set up like that... Oh dear. I just noticed the, the variety of mutants Welcome we're now set. dealing with. Alright, we have... Okay, we have bombs. We don't have... Units that can heal. So that's... Or we don't have units that can defend the... Uh, or shore up the sand. That's something to keep in mind. Tip. <clears throat> yeah, so these mutant humanoids... Split up into two upon death, so we're definitely going to want to, uh, or we're, it's not as pressing. Okay, let me take a moment to collect my thoughts and say what I was going to say about Myrtle. Yes, putting her in the very back is probably a bad thing to do because we don't want Myrtle as our last line of defense, because if we need DP, she can't block. Putting her out in front is not great either, I don't think, but it's better. Maybe. But yes. So. I guess I don't have anything much deeper than that to say. I just sort of wanted to share my uh, observations on that front. Um, so yeah. Healer soon is good. Stopping enemy soon is good. Oh, well. Okay, hold on. Let's go. Alright, so, case in point. Setting up. If you're not careful with Myrtle, she will uh, not be able to fulfill her role. And it, no, she is fulfilling her role. She won't be able to defend is the issue. She won't be able to block, which is a thing that she can do, but it's not necessarily the thing that she always wants to do. You've already established that Sora can't outheal the Sandstorm, so placing her here would be dangerous. Granted, it would only be dangerous once the Sandstorm becomes a big issue or once the yeah once the sandstorm is worn through those two uh dirt mounds we could always place gaviel as well but i don't know that we're going to need gaviel otherwise so i'm a little bit reluctant to make use of her that being said if we're going to deploy oh, gray oh whoops didn't mean to speed up ready to go watch for the blast Let's take some enemies out a little bit faster. We don't want them to pile up if we can avoid it. But yes, we can get a little bit more heal or a little bit more DP out of Myrtle. So, um, can actually this would probably be a little well, no, because then we wouldn't be able to. I don't know. I guess I don't need Sora necessarily. Yeah, I've been like working under the assumption that I want her on the team, or I want her on the field, which is not necessarily sound. Like, I'm not opposed to it, but like, you know, 
it's not going to be a tactical failure if we don't have Sora out, for instance. Ah. Alright, just moved out of range. Deployed. Yes, we're definitely seeing a lot of enemies here now. So I think a thing heal. that could be good would be to do something a little bit like this. And I think mm -hmm. we're going to want to swap out Myrtle sooner rather than later. This one's mine. All right, let's start some stunning, and let's start some blasting. Excellent line out of gray there. All right. It feels... Hmm. Do the expressances also spawn stunned if their progenitors were stunned when they were spawned? Interesting. All right, Frost before too long is going to be in a situation where she can no longer... Oh, so this sort of plays by Bomberman rules. Interesting. Um, I guess it doesn't It doesn't extend infinitely. Is this... Ah, okay. So the Originium explosives do need time to arm. Hmm, okay. So, the situation might uh, degenerate if I'm not careful here. So let's do what we can. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. We don't want anything behind us, but if there is something behind us, we, there's nothing we can really do about it. The Chonka, please. Um, Ash? Ah, okay, this is almost ready to go. Okay, it doesn't harm our units, I don't think. Oh dear. Wasn't so careful about the crossbowmen, but we're alive, so it could be worse. The Chonka? Very good. Chonka isn't quite surviving this like I'd like, but he is surviving. Very good. Perfect victory? Whatever. A victory is a victory after all. It sure is. Alright. So, not too difficult. But definitely a lot of thinking to be done. Yes, a Regenerative Puppet. So, they've also got pretty low defenses. They're not terribly fast. Basically, they're just a way to spawn more excrescences. Just a slightly different way of doing it. But yeah, mostly the issues seem to be their quantity more so than anything. Because, yeah, we didn't see anywhere near as many of the... Uh, we didn't see anywhere near as many spiders, for instance. Yeah, I'm almost thinking that maybe since we're dealing with so like so much damage spread across like all of our units from the sandstorm, it might be good to swap out to another, uh, if not another multi-target caster, at least another target or another caster who can sometimes target more than one unit. But we're also facing the issue, or most of the enemies we're facing, I should say, aren't enemies that have very high offensive stats. The crossbowmen did take out uh, Exusier pretty quick there, but they're something of an exception, I think. Because, yeah, the Virginia Utents have very low attack. The Mutant Rock Spiders have attack on par with crossbowmen, apparently, but it doesn't really feel like they are that strong. I guess they are attack or attacking, uh, yeah, they can only attack melee units, the rock spiders. So, yeah, I can see where they'd not be quite as, uh, Earth Spirit. I just realized Earth Spirit would be very good for this because of quick sand conversion. Anyway. But yes, the rock spiders are only attacking melee units, so they... Yeah, melee units have defense, whereas range units have basically negligible defense in most cases. So that explains a lot with that. Um, and yeah, the excrescences are almost certainly not uh, anything of any like real significance when it comes to their stats. They're almost certainly extraordinarily weak and not really worth considering too much. The Origin Mutant Puppet is also an infected creature, which I was not expecting. 
Yeah, I guess I don't know what else they would be, but... If we can... Yeah. What I was sort of getting at earlier with the silence is I am led to believe, and well... Alright, let's not beat around the bush. I read the wiki. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I guess I just typically don't, so I feel kind of weird saying it. Anyway, so I read the wiki and it says that they don't split when they're stunned or when they're silenced. So that is why I was thinking about using uh, Snow Sant and her silences specifically. Anyway, so, story. Pretty quick and easy, that mission. Thunderbolt. Ah, my eyes. Where are the casters? Take out the Voivor. Don't even think about it. What's happening? There's more of them? How? We're in a bad way. They've got way too much firepower. Cut our losses and fall back before this gets any worse. I see you. Ugh. Sniper! Where? Forget it, just run. You're not getting away. Ugh. All back, quickly, just run! They're running. Sit rep. You okay, Alexander? Yeah, just the flesh wound. Those guys are learning. Don't let your guard down. We've still got company. That's close enough, friend. I appreciate the help, but let's keep a comfy distance until we figure things out. Relax, we mean you no harm. We're a Rhodes Island field team, and you're holed up in a Rhodes Island safe house. We're responding to a distress call... Please identify yourselves. Calm down. I'm here to help. It's the Rhodes Islanders? Hey, the cavalry came after all. Go get Mr. Octan. Got it. Rhodes Island operator? Hooray! We're saved! We're saved! Noticing a few misplaced punctuation marks there. That's about the size of it. So, those four mercenaries are the ones who set up the temporary defenses? I'm really sorry. They broke my communicator and I couldn't protect the safe house. I wouldn't blame you if you fired me on the spot. Don't worry. This old man doesn't have the power to fire anybody. And the way I see it, you held out this long all by yourself. That's pretty fantastic. If it weren't for you, these infected would have met a wor much worse fate. How many are they? Counting the doctor outside, 43, all infected. And the four mercenaries were protecting them all this time? Mercenaries going out of their way to look after infected. That's something you don't see every day. Mercenaries who not only don't look down on them, but actively try to help them. Maybe I'm being too paranoid, but where do these saints come from? I think they may not realize. From the way they talk, I get the impression they were just protecting ordinary, innocent townsfolk. I guess it's less that they don't discriminate against the infected, and more that they don't care about oropathy. But they don't look infected at all? I've never seen mercenaries like them. I've never heard of any Team Rainbow. They've got guns, but none of them look like Sancta? Unless the Sancta figured out a way to hide their fluorescent lamps. A non-Sancta mercenary group, fully decked out with big guns like that, is going to be huge news. Black Steel R&D would go nuts if they heard about this. Let's not talk about them like they're not here. Regardless, they saved a Rhodes Island operator and protected a bunch of infected. Until we have some evidence, we shouldn't be doubting their motives. Our top priority is finding a solution to our predicament. Let's talk to them. You know, I just realized for the first time that Rangers has a tail. Not terribly relevant, but I had not I had not noticed that before. They've been in there for a while. What do you think of this Rhodes Island? 
I've been wondering about them. What kind of pharmaceutical company needs a safe house full of military-grade hardware out on the edge of civilization? Well, you've seen the, the sort of civilization that's around here, so... They've got enough arms and explosives to outfit a platoon. And the employees of this pharmaceutical company all look like professional soldiers. Either this world's doctors are armed to the teeth, or the pharmaceutical business is a front. Probably both. They're armed, but they looked well-trained and well-spoken. Spoken? Spoken. It's a night and day difference with the thugs we ran into before. Also, maybe it's just me, but I get a real familiar vibe from them. You know, I got that too. They're reasonable, civilized people at least. Everything I saw before me had me thinking this world was an apocalyptic, bandit-ridden hellscape. I'm finished binding your wound, Mr. Alexander. Thanks, Doctor. Doctor, are you familiar with this Rhodes Island organization? I have heard a bit from the caravans. They're a group that specializes in critical care for the infected, as well as an oropathy research team. But isn't it an incurable disease? Yes. Actually, there used to be a lot of people who claimed to be able to cure oropathy. They were mostly shysters who ended up ruined when their scams were exposed. As for those who just exaggerated the effectiveness of their drugs suppressing the symptoms of oropathy, they might not reach the level of fraud yet, but even their suppressant drugs are very expensive. I guess so. I once heard about a lord whose daughter contracted oropathy, so he spent a lot of money to buy the suppressants from Columbia to save his daughter. Years later, the lord's money dried up and his daughter died of the disease. But look at this. What is it? This is the safe house's store of oropathy suppressants. These past few days, I injected some of the more serious sufferers with this, and it really did suppress their symptoms. It works better than any drug I've ever seen before. This medicine... Must be insanely expensive, no? But Mr. Ockpen wasn't concerned with that at all. When I told him some of my patients were in critical condition, he gave me the box. It's not that I don't believe there are good people in this world, but... Hey, I didn't expect that. Don't overthink it. Suspicion is costly. Whether you show it or not, it's going to get in the way of our talks with them. It looks like our goals are aligned, so we can just lay this, this stuff on the table. If you say so. Oh, they're here. Sorry to keep you waiting. Now, let's skip the pleasantries. Thank you for saving Ockben. Without you, Rhodes Island would have lost a good worker. When the mission is over, I'll make a full report, and Rhodes Island will remunerate you appropriately, and compensate you for your supplies. Enumeration. Enumeration is nice. Also, you put your lives on the line for the infected, and that wins this old man's admiration. These townsfolk have done a lot for us in our time here. Leaving them to die wouldn't be our style. So, you're mercenaries? No, we're... Yes, yes we are. We're mercenaries, the super expensive kind. Can you give us the name of your company? Mercenaries like you are a rare breed. Uh, we're, um... Let me think of a name. Polar Bear Logistics? I understand if you're not in a position to say. We're... we're from a faraway country in... in the south. That's right, we're from way down south. The... south? South of Sargon? Beyond the Foen Hotlands? Foen? Uh, yes, the south. Right. There's... Other countries beyond the Foen Hotlands? That's shocking. I've lived for a long time, and this is the first I've heard of people down there. In all the records of all the Lords Amir, there's never been a single report of someone crossing the Hotlands. You could have made your story a little more or plausible. Plausible like polar bear logistics? Anyway, warriors with Ursine and Victorian a accents, it doesn't matter where you come from. You're willing to fight for the infected, and that, and at least on that point, our interests are aligned. At least for now. We can work together to deal with this situation. I can agree with that. So, who can tell us what the heck happened to this town?
Zark has mercenary. Controlling the monsters should be casters. They're organized, disciplined, and most importantly, they know when to cut their losses and back down. They're not here for a quick raid. They are all properly geared up with Colombian equipment. Some of them were extremely tough back when they sieged the safe house. Judging from their equipment and tactics, they should be professional mercenaries who signed the Red Mark contract. I am afraid it's a rebellion against the local lord. But why are they attacking civilians? They chased us here from the infected quarter. What on earth do these mercs actually want? The most likely answer is they wanted to silence you. I'm afraid that's not the only thing they were after. What do you mean? When they attacked the infected quarter yesterday, they were obviously targeting the sick. They were trying to round them up. I'm pretty sure that was their goal. Kidnapping infected? That doesn't make any sense. The enemy's objectives are a mystery to us, but that's not the most important thing. For now, the best we thing we can do is wait. Wait? You may not realize it, but we're standing in the middle of a, a accompli. We walked into this Lord Amir's territory without his permission, violating his commandments and the local laws. We've broken a major Sargon taboo. The town nobility may be in the middle of a war, but they're still the rulers here. Sticking our noses in anything else at this point would only make our situation even worse. The local lord set up an infected quarter. That tells us he's not totally cruel and heartless. He was willing to let Rhodes Island build a safe house here. That means he's not an isolationist. I think he'll treat us fairly. National law, local governments, I get it. That's the best we can hope for right now. Until the situation changes again, we'll hold out in the safe house and wait for the riots to die down. I hope you can help us. No problem. We need Rhodes Island's professional expertise, too. Alright then, I'm looking forward to working with the four of you. Alright, so we have completed our two mission quota, but I'm feeling pretty okay. I think we can go for another mission. So, that will only put us in a better position for later on. I don't know if we can go so far as OD5, but we can probably do OD4. But yes, so, let's not... Oh, actually, hold on. Oh, there's not a story for OD4, so that saves us some time. Okay. All right, so let's switch back. Yeah, again, I was wondering why why the game was suddenly let's get our heads in the game. arbitrarily this, uh, saying that we couldn't use certain units. That's because they were already being used. But yeah, so I think, let's see. I think I want to revise things a little bit because I let's do, I do want to think about what we're doing here a little bit more. So yes, so, Ashes, I guess, yeah, we've got, we're safe, I can keep the movie off screen. Um, so yes, so Ash, with her first skill, we can get uh, extra damage, yeah, two, basically, we can more than double her DPS for an unlimited duration act after it activates. So yes, whereas with the other, we can stun, and it will not quite double her, or yeah, not more than double her DPS, but... It will, yeah, it will allow us to, okay, skill, okay. I was one, I was a little bit worried that it might be a, you can only use this a certain number of times for mission thing, like with Fuse or Doc, but it looks like, yeah, it looks like Ash can do that uh, as many times as she wants. Probably, probably I should have remembered that from last time, but anyway. So, I think I want to use Assault Tactics because being able to stun enemies, as we saw there, was very valuable. Let's get our heads in the game. So yes, Frost. So, we can stun one enemy, or we can, for one second, or we can bind them for 1.5 seconds. Um, they both take the same amount of time. Okay. But with Incapacitated Prey, she will immediately attack them. Yeah, immediately attack them several times if they're in range, which could be good. Doesn't look like... Hmm, actually, we might want to keep up the stun, the stun, uh, synergy. Because, yeah, Ash does extra damage to stun targets. So, if we keep 
trap deployment on will be stunning instead of instead of binding. But on the other hand, on the other hand, a lot of the enemies we've been facing are pretty weak. So I don't think they're probably not so weak that Frost can take them out with three shots. But I guess it is effectively four 140% attack shots on them, including the damage from the trap. Hmm. But yeah, Incapacitated Prey is the better option for damage, even if it does a little bit less damage up front. So... Yeah, um, hmm. Yeah, it does more damage overall, assuming the enemies have relatively low defense, because we do need to keep in mind the attack. And the fact that enemies do have pretty significant defense sometimes. But the enemies we've been facing don't have very significant defense, honestly. Okay. Next up, Incendiary Grenade versus Spray and Prey. So Spray and Prey is potentially pretty good. Last four seconds. Only comes up every 35 seconds, unfortunately. Um, increases attack. Or has the potential to increase attack. I don't remember how fast it lets him attack, but I think it's probably pretty fast. Burning damage. Oh! Oh, I didn't realize that Incendiary Grenade did arch damage. I guess, I mean, it makes sense, because usually, you know, even if they aren't actual arts, fire effects tend to deal arch damage, but I had just sort of assumed that... I just assumed that, uh, no Rainbow Six Operator did arch damage. Granted, it doesn't do a lot of arch damage, so... I shouldn't probably be counting on it for much of anything. Um, it might be decent for taking out Origin Utens, but I think Spray and Prey would also be good for taking them out. Or, uh, Excrescences, I should say. But yeah, I just realized that we haven't been, uh, we haven't upgraded Jonko's skills at all. So let's do that a little bit. Okay. And then... What does Heavy Firepower do? Okay. So yeah, it gives him the extra attack range and some defense, but it makes him redeploy slower. So yes. Okay. Um, pray and pray. Um, I think I'm willing to tr keep Incendiary Grenade on for the time being. Anyway, Blitz. So, Flash Shield stuns all enemies within range and disables their special abilities for three seconds. Oh! Interesting. That's not a silence. At the very least, it doesn't say that it's a silence. I feel like if it was a silence, it would say it was a silence. Hmm. Disables their special abilities. That's interesting. I guess maybe it works on things that silence doesn't. I don't know if, it, if the Venn diagram of what it affects and what silence affects is, is like a circle with a smaller circle inside of it. But that is interesting. Whereas Shield Bash attacks all blocked enemies once, dealing 150% attack as physical damage and stunning them for 5 seconds. Um, attack speed plus 20, and, or 200 rather, and the first talent's effects increases to 1.3 times. Yeah, he prioritizes stunned enemies and deals extra damage to stunned enemies. Oops. But, with Shield Bash, we can only, we can only stun so many targets. With Flash Shield, we can stun, like, as many as we want. And if we get, like, a huge, huge group of, of uh, excrescences, that's probably what we're going to want. But yes, Perfumer, as we've established, is pretty good for this. Because Sandstorms deal a lot of damage spread across a lot of units. If we make Sora, like, even reasonably remotely strong, she could probably be pretty good. Um, considering she also does passive healing. I suppose... I don't know. I was saying, I was just saying earlier that there's nothing wrong with looking at the wiki. So let's look at the wiki. What is the sand? What is sandstorm damage like? So yes. So sandstorm is 100, 100 true damage every second. So Sora heals. Okay. Thank you, TVPG. But yes. Okay. So yes, one way or the other, uh, Sora would need a lot of attack in order to be able to restore all of that. So she can, like, reduce the rate at which we take Sandstorm damage, but she can't 
obviate it. I don't know. I'm still not super sold on Sora, but I think I should honestly be more sold on Sora because him of him of like rest is like actually pretty good. Or him of respite. Him of respite is pretty good for what we're doing, to be honest. Because yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that him of respite affects like all enemies within like not just at time of activation. Also, thank you for dropping by TVPG. I got a little bit carried away in my tactical discussion there. And I didn't greet you properly, so I hope you're doing well. Anyway, as I was saying, so yes, so him of respite is like really strong potentially because it like it puts enemies to sleep. And though while we can't attack enemies while they're asleep, I imagine that probably explosives can deal damage to them. The Chonka's fire effects can probably deal damage to them, though I don't know he'd be able to. I don't think he'd be able to target them. But yes. Um. So yeah, if he's got if he's got a fire field up already, it could be useful, but it wouldn't really help him for more than that. Um, yeah, anyway, him of respite, the point of it is that, um, the point of I was trying to make is that I'm pretty sure, like, it doesn't just stun enemies that, like, are in the AoE when it activates. I'm pretty sure it puts them to sleep, like, just as long as they're in the air, yeah. And I guess, okay, while Him of Respite is active, she does get more healing, but we can't rely on it that much. I don't know. Again, I'm not, I don't know that I, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm mostly just using Sora here because I haven't used a Bard before. But I suppose if I'm going to decide whether or not I like Bards, I should be giving my Bards a fighting chance. Hold on, the Sora, Sora has like a has a really high max level. That's weird. Is that or no? <laughs> okay, I misread the the experience the experience meter. I thought it was saying that she had a max level of a hundred pre promotion, and I was thinking that's weird. But no, okay. Sora is not some sort of bizarre freak of nature. She might be, but she's not. Um, she's not as far as uh, levels go. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, okay, anyway, so I'm going to give her, like, make her strong so that we can really get a chance to see if she's good, and I, I like using her. So, yes, so. Leveling up. We might actually temporarily be able to obviate the sandstorm damage with her at this level with this amount of uh, effect on her skill. Again, I shouldn't rely on that. I can't rely on that, but it is what it is. Anyway, so we're keeping Sora around. And I think we might just swap out Gabiel because the range hasn't been an issue very much. But I do think being able to target multiple units is going to be an issue. So we're bringing out an old favorite of mine. New data used to assemble package build. Yes, Tilopsis. Yes, Tilopsis has definitely been a hero for me. Saved a lot of strategies. And I have no doubt she's going to continue to do that for us today. Yes. In a, yeah, a large part of that is skill aura. That will allow us to get our skills up faster. So we'll get more use out of Sora and all that. Other units too, but... Again, I want to see what... I want to see if we can put on the best concert that Sora has to offer for us. So yes, anyway. So Sora is as as she is. Gray. Um, slow. Slow, actually. Slowing is good. We were just talking about ma no, maybe wanting to swap out Earth Spirit. Swap out for Earth Spirit, rather. I suppose if we've got delaying in the form of Sora's slow, we maybe don't need... Uh, yeah, if we've got or Sora's sleep, and we've got Gray's slow. We might not need Earth Spirits. Especially because, yeah, this slows... Okay, slows the target for, for 0.4 seconds. I don't know if that is just the primary target or all units hit by his ability. Either way, I think we're going to want to use Electrostatic Discharge. Everyone, I'm here to help. And Hayes is... Uh, Hayes. 
there's nothing more we can do about her unless we promote her, which I might or I might not. I'm not going to do it immediately, though. Savage is herself, also. She's fine. I don't see any reason to change anything up. The Precise Blast is going to be even more useful going forward, I imagine. And otherwise, I think our team is very, very well suited for dealing with a lot of things all at once. We could maybe swap out Haze for another AoE caster if we really felt like it. And Myrtle's healing has not really been relevant, so I think we're going to swap her back to support Beta. Not that it changes all that much for her, but, you know, it gives her better DP generation rate. Um, yeah, a pretty significantly better one, honestly. It, like... Nearly, in fact, probably more than doubles the amount of DP she's able to generate. Well, that might not be a completely accurate. The effective DP per second. Um, anyway, we're gonna keep using Myrtle. Is all is what I mean to say. There's a mission. I wanna go. Don't worry, you are going. Direct so. access for application map. An enemy coordinates authorized. Please let's see, by. let's see. Okay, we can reinforce. And I don't know. I don't know if we need Sora right now. Again, we've said what we've said about her. I don't know. More healing is never, like, bad, per se. Though how useful it is does vary a little bit. Okay. So. Infected creature. We do actually... I keep forgetting that we have Snow Sant. <laughs> but maybe we should be making use of her at all. Um, I've positioned our unit in such a way that it's somewhat awkward to use Snow Sant. Um, because I can't easily put her in a place where a medic would be able to help her. Unless I want to adjust things a little bit. Actually, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I talking about? I can put her on the ground. Okay, anyway, Myrtle. We're counting on you again today, little apple. Uh, I was gonna say I don't like this, but yeah, she can... Savage can deal with the Origin Eutons just fine. I don't think about Savage. She has a talent. Yeah. Um, if there's more than two ranged tiles in the four surrounding tiles, so the ones orthogonally adjacent to her, um, she gets a slight attack and defense bonus, which is pretty nice. Can be, at the very least. What's that? All right, let's deal with these, and let's not let this fall, I don't think. Because we're going to want to deploy some units over there, I do believe. This should be okay. Mm, I don't know. I don't know if I want to place units that far forward at this point. Let's place them further back, because this gives us more sort of coverage. Actually... I was thinking that we wouldn't want to let these break because we wouldn't want enemies to get through them. Or we wouldn't... Or, yeah, other way around. I was thinking we wouldn't want to reinforce that because an enemy would probably break it, but we haven't seen that as a mechanic so far, so I don't have any reason to believe that they would actually do that. This is my first time being so close to a battlefield. I think this is, in fact, the first time that we've deployed Snow Sant on the ground, so... You are correct. Can we... No. I maybe should have placed her a bit further back, because she does have... Yeah, she's got pretty good range. Origin of Uthans. Oh, dear. I don't like that guy. Alright, we're going to get enemies coming from the other side, it looks like. Potentially. Um... Actually, how did I position... Ah, uh, I didn't position you very well for Gray. Um, but we can not make this work. At least not with just one. Ah, okay, hold on. Because, yeah, we can't get rid of that dirt mound in any way. And we're also having our defenses fail. Um... All right, no good solution, so we're just going to settle for an okay solution. Oh dear. All right. Let's get this situation under control. Um, we'll swap you out. Um, defender. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, so that fellow is quite strong. Yeah, I saw that it had a tough outer shell, which implies to me, uh, probably has high defense. Hmm. Alright, I'm worried. You might not be afraid, but I certainly am. Okay, let's defend that. I'm not seeing any ranged enemies, so we're probably not in as bad of a situation, or as worrisome of a situation as I was kind of expecting we'd be in. Hmm. Given the hard shell, I feel like maybe defense or more arch damage could be good. Out and about. What's next? Right, I was going to use, uh, hmm. That's fine. Come on, chin up. I was going to use Savage's right. ability, but I don't think that would... Yeah, I don't think that's going to hurt the Origin Mutant. Because it's not within her range. She's facing it, but she's not, you know, she can't actually hit it with the ability because it's based on spacing. Uh, Tachanka... Oh, Gray is also getting hit, but, you know, not the worst thing in the world. Let's oh, yes. undeploy Tachanka. What kind of battle will it end up being? I wonder. So far it's ended up being a kind of uh troublesome battle. I guess actually, with Snow Sant here, we can actually deploy her like so. I don't know if that's a good place to deploy her, but it uh will allow us to disable the uh Origin Utent occasionally. And it does look like we're going to be dealing with a good number of those, so... But, we also... Hmm. We also want to be able to deal with the... Physical damage enemies. So... So, I think it's going to be very important that we stun... Probably pretty frequently. Um... Here we go! Don't get carried away! Alright, we need a lot of healing, because we need to be able to keep Savage on the ground. Okay. Alright, we've got some not-so-great timing on all of our abilities, but, um... Okay, okay, we've got this under control. We can manage. Savage, um, please explode them. Very good. Blitz is holding firm. Okay. And, okay, we've got one enemy left, so we can finish this up. Very good. Not a single resource wasted. A flawless victory. Thank you, Snow Sam. All right. So that was pretty good. Pretty clean. But yeah, it does feel... It does feel like a little bit of a shame to to end when we could probably keep going a little bit further. But I was just saying earlier that I wanted to get some extra rest. And, you know, we did make three stages worth of progress when I was planning on making two. So I'm ahead of schedule and, you know, I'm ahead of schedule and I have, yeah, okay. We'll just take a break. I'll just end. We'll just be okay with that. I could do more, but I don't want to continue to push myself too much. I want to be going at a somewhat sustainable pace. But yes, I don't know that we really needed that that sleep from Sora, but it's definitely it definitely was valuable. I think we got good value out of it. But yeah, the more I think about it, the more I kind of want to use Liskarm, because we do have a there are few units who have a high, uh, high SP cost. Sora being a good example of them. Yeah, with a 60 SP cost on her skill. But I guess there's probably plenty of operators who have a similar, yeah. Yeah, again, I believe I've mentioned it before, but Liskarm has the ability to give, uh, one SP to all units, uh, orthogonally adjacent to her. So again, the tile above her, the, yeah tile above and below and to the left and right of her. But yes. So she gives one SP to each of them. 
It might actually be just to one of them, I don't remember precisely. But she gives an SP to herself and to at least one adjacent ally every time she is hit with an attack. And we're going to be getting hit by a lot of attacks throughout this event. Um, it might be decent to also invest in perhaps Korra, or at least bring Korra, because she is very high in defense and is able to block a whole lot. But yes. More deep, or yeah, more AoE damage is good. Chanka wasn't really necessary for that mission, but he would be. He's fine. He's doing fine. I don't want to see what the Origin Utents are like. So they have... Okay, they've got... Oh, okay. So they've got S plus uh, resistance, which uh, is a lot. I don't know precisely what that uh, a lot is, but it's a lot. Hmm. So they've got very high attack, we've seen. Snow Sant... I guess we didn't have two healers on Snow Sant, so we didn't give her much of a fighting chance either. Um, I guess, could we... What's her... What's Snow Sant's defense like, actually? 262 versus Savage's 268, so pretty negligible. Snow Sant, or Savage survived, so Snow Sant almost certainly could have as well. He could have gotten some more stuns off, which would have been good. Um, I was noticing Snow Sant was pulling enemies directly to her, which I suppose is to be expected because that's what she's meant to do. I didn't like it so much, um, so I might want to make sure she's being deployed on a range tile in the future. But yeah. Well, I don't know. Her blocking is not a problem necessarily. In fact, it's probably good because that means that's yeah that means that things are less troublesome for everyone else i think we aren't taking enemies out that quickly i was kind of thinking that we were just taking them out like one after the other but the enemies don't have that low health and that low defense so i think i do want to switch snow sand over to telescoping electric net it'll be all right i just need to remember my training and work hard indeed hmm. so anyway other than that, our team worked perfectly fine. I think that's the only real suggestion or the only real improvement we could make with the current team as we have them. So I think we're just going to... Yeah, we've seen what we can do with this. We've gotten a little bit more insight into Snow Sand and all that. Hayes did okay. I think... I feel like Hayes can also... Hayes has something that she gets when she's promoted. I don't remember what she what she can do. Mm, res uh, she reduces resistance. Okay. So that could be useful. Her talent, yeah, Black Mist reduces resistance. Right, and yeah, I think we, I also looked up her, her other skill, which, yeah, decreases her max HP and increases her attack and her attack speed. We've not seen a lot of melee enemies in this, in this event, so honestly, that's probably pretty good. Yeah, it has the same duration as attack up beta but it provides more attack actually well no it does actually provide less attack level for level it looks like yeah the attack buff is lower but it does come with an attack speed buff as well and it also has a shorter cooldown or a shorter uh charge up rather because yeah at best attack up beta is a 35 second uh requires 35 seconds to charge whereas crimson eyes requires 25 at max we're not going to get to max obviously but i mean we could i guess but um anyway so so yeah crimson eyes could probably be pretty good yeah black mist could also be good i was kind of hoping that haze also had a slow but I guess that's a little bit much to ask. I think one other thing. I might want to look into chain casters, actually. Because, yeah, again, we're not facing enemies that have, like, for the most part, we're not facing enemies that have particularly high resistance other than the Origin Mutants. But maybe it's worth looking into what kind of resistance they have. Because S plus implies to me probably 70 or more, given what I saw before. Maybe more than that, honestly. 
Hmm. I want to be careful so that I don't spoil myself. Um, yeah, they were origin mutants. Um, so they have, they have a resistance of 80. 80%. 80 has. I should just, uh, can hire you as my consultant, should I? Shouldn't I, TVPG? But yes, thank you for the, for the, uh, information. But yes. So, with that, Haze, or, yeah, Black Haze, or Black Mist, reduces, uh, yeah, reduce, reduces resistance by a percentage. So yeah, the more resistance the enemy has, the more effective it is. Um, so it could be pretty good spoiler-free enemy intel. I do appreciate that, yes. But yes, so. Hmm, I guess the question is, do I want to be focusing on taking out origin mutants? Or do I want to be focusing on taking out large numbers of enemies? So far, the issue has been mostly in bulk. We've not really been able to block quite as effectively as I might like. But yeah, we almost had an enemy leak, if not for the quick deployment of Tachanka. Sora, again, with Hymn of Respite can help with that. Ray with his slow can help with that. Snow Sand with her telescoping electric net can stun or can silence a whole lot of enemies for a good while. Haze, yeah. Haze is good for dealing with the Origin Mutants. I don't know if we're going to need to deal with that many Origin Mutants, because we are definitely, like, we are out of the territory that I have seen. I had played up to uh, Mission 4 before, but I it's been so long since uh, the last time this event was run, the first time this event was run, that I completely forgot. I completely forgot basically everything we were facing. So, anyway, um, yeah. All that being said, everyone is doing pretty good. I don't have any, like, complaints. I think Savage was, I kind of picked her on a spur of the moment thing, just because I wanted to use a Centurion and I didn't want to necessarily use a Centurion that I had already been using. But Savage is really doing, she's really putting in the work. But yeah, and I definitely appreciate the ability to get a big, like, a big uh, strike against a whole lot of enemies all at once with a precise blast. I guess, okay, it does only affect three enemies at maximum. I was thinking that it, uh, I was thinking that it could affect any number, but I guess that'd be pretty strong for a Centurion now that I think about it. I guess Centurions aren't necessarily weak, but it'd be, it'd be very strong to be able to deal that much damage to that many enemies. Um, because yeah, it is like a third, 320% of her attack damage. And that's, yeah, that's nothing to sneeze at. But yes, Telopsis did fine, no complaints. Um, Perfumer did fine, no complaints. I think probably going forward, it's it would be best to deploy Telopsis first versus, instead of Perfumer, because skill aura being active earlier means that we get more DP out of Myrtle, which in turn means that we get more units quicker. I don't remember if I had Myrtle at the end of on the field at the end of that battle, but I do need to remember to like retreat Myrtle at some point. Because we don't need that many DP from her. And she doesn't contribute that much to the battlefield once she's uh once we're at a comfortable DP number. So I guess I kind of got used to uh, Pon Cyrus, who is a pretty significant presence on the battlefield, even after she's done with the early phases. And again, you know, uh, Pon Cyrus's whole shtick is that she gets better the longer she's on the field. Not necessarily linearly, but you know, after her talent has, has activated twice, or after her skill is activated twice, it's permanently active. And after a while, she gets more HP from her talent. So yeah, so all of this is to say <clears throat> that uh, I kind of forgot that vanguards are supposed to be vanguards, you know. They are the units that start off the battle, but they're not necessarily the units that you finish the battle with. Pon Cyrus is a little bit unique in that way, that she is a unit that you want to have out for a good long time, or uh, among vanguards, so... I don't know, I don't think that there's anything wrong with one way or the other. I do think that being able to switch out Myrtle 
or like having Myrtle available to switch out is probably for the best. But I guess Pawn Cyrus does have... I was thinking that Pawn Cyrus could only block one enemy, but she can actually block two. So that is like on par with most of our guards. But yeah, the only the only way she'd be able to block more is if we or the only it would only be reasonable to expect another unit to block more if they were a defender, and we don't necessarily need another defender. So honestly, I'm kind of talking myself into using Pawn Cyrus again because she gives us more blocking. She's tough, and we can keep her around for longer. Um, I don't know. Actually, Texas is another good choice because we can get a lot of we can get stuns from Texas. Hmm. Or we could also go for a a charger. This would actually be a really good. Uh, this would be really good for chargers, actually. I think because they can get a a DP for every enemy that they kill, and we can. As we've been seeing, we've been fighting a lot of enemies, so that would be pretty good. So again, we've got a lot of really strong units on our side right now. So we've got a lot of really strong units on our side right now. So mo eh, all of the charges that I have are relatively weak. I could fix that, obviously, but I don't necessarily want to. Hmm. Anyway, so... Chargers are able to generate DP from defeating enemies. We're facing a lot of enemies, so there's potentially a lot of enemies to defeat, but I don't have a lot of chargers that do a whole lot of damage because I don't have, I haven't really invested much in chargers as a, uh, yeah, I haven't invested much in chargers as a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? As an archetype? I don't know. It's worth thinking about. But I don't know if I necessarily... I don't know if I feel that strongly about it. I don't just want to use Pawn Cyrus. There's nothing wrong with Pawn Cyrus, I don't think. But I don't know. I like to try out different things. I like to have a wide variety of different abilities available to me. But again, eh, it's fine. I'll think about it and not worry too much about it. I suppose to fill a little bit more time. I think... One thing I'm going to do is I'm finally going to install that keel over at the base and level up our base. Because we've been sitting on that for like, I don't know, since chapter... For months, several months, I've not installed it. And we just have not had any base upgrades. And it's been terribly inefficient when I could have been more efficient. And we all know that that's the biggest, the biggest crime. But anyway, so... Going to the base... Probably should have spoken before I went there, but anyway. Um, I guess we do still have the, the movie up and all that. So yeah, anyway. There are units in this game that are spoilers for some events. I don't know that I have any in my base right now because I don't pay that much attention to what units are in my base currently. I just choose the units that I feel like are probably best for what I need, and then I don't think about it very much. Anyway. While we're in the base, there might be some units who are possibly a spoiler, but I guess we're actually not going to be thinking about the base too much, we're just going to be upgrading it. So, maybe I don't need to think about it too much either. Now that I think about it, how do I... Do I need to upgrade the control facility? Okay, I need concrete building materials. So, for that we need to go to the workshop. We have nine color deer working here. We've seen her. Okay, or no. Do I need concrete building materials or light building materials? I'm sure I'll need both at some point anyway, so I suppose we might as well just make concrete to start out with. And if we need to swap things around, we can do that. So yeah, anyway, we might see an operator here who's a spoiler. So if you care about spoilers, uh, you might want to turn your turn your head for now. Um, but yes, so we can upgrade it. Oh, oh no, we need something more than concrete building materials. Okay, what was that? Hmm. Interesting. Do I need to upgrade? Or no, hold on. Reinforced building material. Okay, 
to upgrade, unlock and upgrade level three workshop during one. During one. Hmm. Okay, whoops. Workshop. Okay, so we just need to upgrade the workshop a little bit. Okay. Upgrading. Okay, workshop is upgraded. Okay, we've got reinforced building materials. Um, we got our unit un unset, but that's fine. Once again. Oh, wow, we can... We've unlocked a lot of recipes. I think probably some of the uh, some of the things that we needed to upgrade some of our units are also available to make now. Anyway, where was I? Right. <laughs> okay, reinforced building materials. We need some of those. Ah, okay. So we can only make two while staying... Or no, we can only make two, period. Okay. And we need more than that. So we need... Okay, we need carbon packs. Logistics. Okay, whoops. Hmm. Ah, okay. We don't need to make that many. Let's... Okay. So. I have four carbon packs. I need two for each reinforced building material, and I need eight building materials. So... We've already got enough to make. We've already got enough to make two reinforced building materials, so we need six more reinforced building materials worth of carbon packs. Okay, six times. Or yeah. Okay. Well, we need to make twelve of these. I don't care that much about. Uh, yeah, I don't care that much about um, byproducts. So we're just gonna make them all just to be fast about this. Cool. All right. Carbon packs. And then we will make reinforced building materials. Very good. So, we have the reinforced building materials. We have looked at the operators I have again. Um, so, yes. Now we should be able to upgrade the control center. Or not. Ah, right. We don't have enough uh, drones. So... All right, you can re you can refresh drones with or with the uh, originite prime. Or no, oh no, you can use sanity. Right. Anyway, I was going to say that you can up you can reinforce or you can eh you can recharge drones with originite prime. I think that's true, but I wouldn't do that ever because it's terribly inefficient. Or rather, you're trading something that like you only get like a limited supply of unless you buy it. And, you know, they do introduce new missions, which give you more Originite Prime over time. But, you know, for each Originite Prime that you get, you need to complete a stage. And, you know, there's only so many stages in the game at any given time. And you, again, you only get them for your first three-star clear. I think you can also get them from, like, challenge mode clears and stuff like that. I don't know that much. I don't know very much about the sort of economic side of Arknights. I've only just started scratching the surface of the tactics side, and I this is definitely not the part of the game that I know anything about. Anyway, I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the right place, but I'm in the wrong menu. Alright, what? Okay, I need a facility. I need 10 facilities that are level 3. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Um, what else can we upgrade? Um, workshops level 2... Um, how many facilities do I have built? Not, not many. I could definitely be doing better. All right, let's just start upgrading things. Oh, that needs more. All right, so this is going to take a while, actually. <laughs> uh, so I guess I'm going to have to do this off screen. I was expecting I could just like do it, but uh, no, actually, never mind. Okay. <laughs> Let's wrap up, I suppose. All right. So, economics. I don't know anything about those, as we've established. I have not been using my incredible supply of resources very efficiently. I could probably be really in a very, very different, very different situation uh, if we had... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If I had been 
more on the ball with that a long time ago. But, whatever. Anyway, so, what else is there to say? Right, so, raid. We're going to raid. If anyone has a raid suggestion, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, I can find a target on my own. And, okay. So, 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 what do we want to say? What do we want to do? Not a whole, not a whole lot, I suppose. Once again, the, uh, yeah, okay. Yes, the schedule is very simple. Arc Knights every day until we are done with uh, Operation Originium Dust. Yes, Arc Knights every day until Operation Originium Dust is done. Once Operation Originium Dust is done, we'll take a little break from Arc Knights probably. Probably not, uh, I don't know. At least for the rest of the week. We'll continue the week after, if nothing else. Um, but yes. So, for the Wednesday and potentially Saturday stream, you should be looking at a 8.30 or 9, somewhere between, yeah, a start time somewhere between 8.30 and 9 p.m. For the Thursday and Friday stream, did I say, okay, the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday stream, we should be looking at a start time around 8.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then for the uh, Thursday and Friday stream, we should be looking at a start time somewhere around 9 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Okay, so, now that we have said that, I'm not seeing any raid suggestions. So I think right now we're going to go and raid Marky Chin, who I saw a little while ago. I saw, I first saw a little while ago. Uh, I actually raided into someone who raided into Marky Chin, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't think I directly raided into, into Mark. Actually, no, wait, that was the... I think I met them that time when I was uh, on Shep's stream. Maybe. Anyway, all this is to say we've not uh, <clears throat> not raided into Market Chin before. I don't think so. They're playing a Kaizo Iron Man Iron Mon run of uh, Pokemon Platinum. It looks like, and they've currently got an ad running, or rather, I have a pre pre. Uh, What's the word for those? I don't know. The the ads that play when you first go to a channel. Anyway, it's done now. So anyway, raid. Mark Chin. Okay. So, the customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. Yeah, it looks like they are as far as Fantina. Have a good night. You as well, TVPG. Always a delight to have you around. Thank you very much for your information. But yes, just uh, looks like they looks like they just beat Fantina, the ghost type gym leader, who I think is the fourth or fifth gym leader. I understand that uh, Kaizo Ironmon run or Kaizo Ironmon, a yes, Kaizo Ironmon is a difficult run, basically. So yes, so yeah, good to good to see that they're making good progress. Anyway, so all that being said, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you will be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much and farewell. Let us get this raid underway. <laughs>